Hey, this is Greg. Welcome to the channel. Well, it finally happened. Exxon hit the big one double O. And I couldn't be more happy and excited because going back to when I first recommended it on this channel in March of 2020, when it was at a low of $33 a share, it has basically tripled since then. And this year alone, it's gone up 60% at a time when the NASDAQ, as we all know, is down over 20%. So this is really remarkable, and I have actually been predicting that it's gonna hit 100 for about a year, and it just took a very long time to actually get there. But of course, what we always try and do on this channel is ask the question, is it still a good investment at these extended levels? And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So the situation in the last year and a half in terms of the setup for a stock like Exxon has just been absolutely incredible. Everything seems to have gone right for the stock. Unfortunately, uh, this indicates that a lot of things have gone bad for the economy and bad for the country. So while I do feel bad about that, you know, we are investing our money here. We are trying to make money on our money and we're trying to do the smartest things that we can. And as a result, I personally and I hope that most of you who have been watching me have been very long energy for this entire period. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna look at some of the indicators that I look at, the charts, uh, the uh, sentiment indicators, and th things of this nature to determine uh, where we are right now in the cycle and is this something that you should either remain invested in or initiate a new position if you're not already in the stock. Okay, so here you see uh, the Exxon chart. You can see today it closed at 104 and change. <laughs> really remarkable. And you can see really this extraordinary run up since the beginning of 2022. Uh, it, it went from around $60 and currently it's way up here, extremely extended at 104. That's like a 61% increase. Let's take a look at the fundamentals. Uh, here you can see that in terms of valuation, um, the price to earnings ratio is uh, going higher, obviously. Um, but uh, this is occurring against the backdrop of the company expanding its profit and cash flow rather dramatically. Uh, the price to sales uh, ratio is still very low at 1.42, uh, given the amount of money that this company makes. Uh, the price to book ratio, 2.57 times, uh, is much higher than when we previously looked at it, but it's still relatively low. And this price to book is basically the price to the book value of the company as measured by its balance sheet. Uh, next, the price to cash flow is at 7.42 times. And that, while it, again, it's higher than it was before, before it was ridiculously undervalued, uh, now it's coming up into fair value. However, uh, given the price of the commodity, uh, the oil and gas, um, this uh, will continue to, um, to go up because the, the profits are just expanding so rapidly. Next, I like to look at the uh, analyst uh, sentiment or price targets, because this <laughs> really tells you a lot about where we are in the cycle. I always look at this because it, in my mind, is a negative indicator. The analyst community are followers, they're not leaders. And as you can see, uh, back in January 2022, they were all pretty bearish, right? They all follow the crowd, they're all sheeple, right? So they were all bearish down here and that was actually, would have been an extremely good time to buy it. And in fact, I did do a video back then where I did recommend that uh, you buy it. But anyway, uh, since then, it's just been roaring upward. And you can see now everybody's bullish, right? The price went up. Guess what? Now everybody's bullish. When the price is low, 
and it's a great buy, an unbelievable buy 60% ago, they're all bearish. Now, when the price is high and much, much less attractive, they're all bullish, okay? Very interesting. Okay, so I think it's safe to say, and I think you can see from just that brief presentation, the price is extended. The valuations are getting more into fair value territory. Um, the price is not nearly as attractive as it was uh, six months ago, a year ago. Uh, that's pretty obvious, you know, to anybody that looks at this. But I think that there are still some underpinnings here and some factors that you really have to consider before you either sell this stock or before you decide that you're not going to go into it because energy has peaked. Okay, so I think it's pretty obvious that the price is extended. It's certainly a lot less attractive investment than it was six months ago. And now we have the benefit of hindsight. We can say that, but the problem is when you're looking at it now, you don't know what the future is going to hold, right? So you have to make some decisions. Now, what I'm going to talk about now is I think that there are still some very bullish aspects to uh, further investment in Exxon. Maybe you don't want to go in like today, but maybe you want to wait for a sell-off. But I think the setup is still very positive. So let's talk about where we are and refresh this issue right now. The first reason I'm still bullish is the supply-demand imbalance. Okay, you just have to look around you today, look at where the gas prices are, look at where the oil prices are, and you can tell just from observing life that there is a continued supply demand imbalance. Okay, the economy is still growing, maybe not as strong as it was a year ago, but it's still growing. There's still demand, uh, employment is low in the low three percents, right? Unemployment is very low. People are still working. People are still spending money. And with that goes demand for oil and gas. Now, along with that enormous demand that we still have, supply is constrained, all right? I just read an article that OPEC is having trouble uh, pumping uh, as much oil as they want to pump uh, for various systemic reasons but they're still not pumping as much as they want to pump. Um, uh, the domestic supply, of course, here in the United States is constrained, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But you're still constrained on the supply side. Uh, we have a declining number of oil refineries in this country. I don't think we're ever going to build another oil refinery in this country. Uh, the gas refineries are also uh, dwindling, and I don't think you're ever going to build a new one there. So it's not only the uh, discovery supply which is constrained, also the refining capacity is also constrained. Second thing, obvious, the geopolitical situation is horrendous, okay? You have the war in Ukraine, which has been going on and on. The U.S. is funding it. They're going to, they're going to put in another uh, $50 billion dollars. Uh, into uh, equipping Ukraine with uh, weapons. That's basically funding the war. Meanwhile, I read that uh, Russia is basically circumventing the sanctions by selling oil at a discount to India, which is then reselling it to China. So you have these bad actors, India and China, basically circumventing a lot of the sanctions. That's giving Putin more money to fund the war. So when is this going to end? I don't know, but it could go on for a very long time. Next is domestic policy. Okay, we've talked extensively on this channel about this, but the Biden administration has been resolutely against oil and gas ever since it took office and has been doing everything it possibly can to kill the oil and gas business. And that has been really a stated policy. Now, along with that, you have the rising gas prices. And I personally believe that because of their green energy push and their push to uh, force people, so to speak, to drive uh, as much as they can anyway, to drive EV cars, they want gas prices high, okay? There's no other explanation other than it's their stated goal 
and it goes along with their green energy initiatives, they want gas prices high so that people are incentivized to buy and drive EV cars. It's really crazy, it's insane, but that's the box that we're in right now and I don't see it changing anytime soon. The next thing is new discoveries. I did two videos and I will put one up here and one up here at the end of this video so you can check them out that talk about the Guyana discovery. Exxon is the head of a consortium that has discovered this incredible resource off the coast of Guyana which is worth at least 10 billion barrels of oil. Okay? And if you do some quick math on that, as I did in those other videos, it is worth hundreds of billions of dollars to Exxon. And, it, it, you know, the, the oil discovery is so significant and so obscene, some have called it the greatest oil discovery in history. And I think it could very well uh, prove to be that way. And it's going to cause enormous profit and cash flow growth for Exxon. And it's starting to pay back right now. And so in the next few years out, certainly uh, next three years out to 2025, I think that you're going to see uh, it have a very meaningful impact on Exxon's profit and cash flow growth. And the last reason why I'm bullish is more of a financial reason, but this company has paid and grown its dividend for 40 years, okay? It's one of the best, most consistent dividend payers in the industry, in the world, actually. And in addition to that, they recently said that they're going to increase their stock buyback plan from $10 billion to $30 billion. Now, this works out to roughly 10% of the entire market cap of the company, all right? You know, I've been in this business a long time. I've looked at a lot of stocks, seen a lot of companies. I can't remember any time when a company said that they're going to buy back essentially 10% of their entire market cap. And this flows directly to the bottom line for you as a stockholder. And it just makes your shares that much more valuable. So yes, I am bullish on Exxon. I love the company. I love the stock. Everything is lining up perfectly for this company. Now, I'm not naive. I know that as things change, you have to reevaluate the situation, okay? And let me also say, I would not buy it here, okay? Because it's extremely extended. And we all know that oil and gas companies are sort of volatile in the short term. They go up and down with the oil prices. You know, oil right now is at 120 a barrel. So, of course, these oil companies, Exxon and Chevron, which are my two favorites, uh, are rallying like crazy. They go up almost every day when everything else I see uh, is going down. Um, I personally have a, a very large allocation toward energy, and it's almost all in Exxon. I have a small position in Chevron, but I have a huge position for me in uh, Exxon. I will continue to have a very large allocation to energy until there are fundamental changes in the situation, what I call the setup for the stock. So if you got value out of this video, please remember to like and subscribe. And I'd love to have you on board for future presentations, which will be coming your way very soon. But in the meantime, it's very important for you to hit this video or this video, or preferably both. <laughs> and you can learn a lot more about the Guyana discovery, which is really absolutely amazing. Okay, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.